the Euro. Today I'm going to tell you everything that you've ever wanted or need to know about Machiavelli for the AP European History exam and for life. This guy's not going to go away. You're going to hear about him in political science courses. You might even see occasional references to him in pop culture and about Machiavellian tactics. So today we're going to talk about Machiavelli and this is the first part of my series on civic virtue in the Renaissance. And what civic virtue is, is about effective political leadership. Civic virtue is not virtue that we're used to thinking of in terms of moral excellence, which is the type of virtue that you see a lot of the Renaissance humanists seeking after. Machiavelli is not about virtue in the sense of moral excellence, in the traditional sense, but about virtue in the sense of effective political leadership. By Machiavelli standards, Bill Clinton was a virtuous leader. Now, this is not someone we're used to thinking about as virtuous. After all, just plug his name into YouTube and see what comes up. Bet you're going to get something like this. But I want to say one thing to the American people. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Well then, for all we can say about Bill Clinton, he did sign a welfare reform bill, and he did this while the other party, the Republican Party, was in power in both houses of Congress. Our current president's always complaining about how the Republicans won't work with him. Well, Machiavelli would say, get some civic virtue, okay? Your predecessor was able to work with the other party. Presidents have been able to do that, and so what you need to do is possibly read The Prince which is a book by Machiavelli, who had a dream, okay? Machiavelli, like other humanists, was obsessed with Greece and Rome. So for Machiavelli, this is the ideal, the Roman Empire. And Machiavelli is reading about the Romans and this great empire that they put together, and it gets him thinking about Italy of his day. Look at this. Now, at one time, Italy had controlled the entire Mediterranean world. And in Machiavelli's day, Italy wasn't even unified. He had a dream of someone stepping up and unifying Italy, something that's not going to happen for hundreds of years. But when he looked at this Italy, divided into Naples, Florence, the Papal States, Genoa, Venice, all of these city-states that are warring against each other and constantly being engaged in quarrels, he's thinking, why can't we put something together more like the Roman Empire? And what Machiavelli's thinking is, how could this be done? And more specifically, what kind of leader would it take to rebuild a unified Italy, a strong leader? What kind of strengths would this leader need? So he writes The Prince, which is intended to be a handbook for rulers. If somebody's going to rule, this is how they should rule. And if we were going to put The Prince into just uh, you know, one catchy phrase, perhaps make war, not love. Think of Machiavelli as the anti-hippie. And let's think back to the Romans, all right? What were the Romans good at more than anything else? They were good at war. They built a great empire by being good at war. So Machiavelli notes that when princes have thought more of ease than of arms, they have lost their states. Looking back at the history of Rome, you see this happen. The Romans become soft, and then they lose their empire. So first of all, be good at war before anything else. And what we see throughout The Prince is Machiavelli's sense of pragmatism. Pragmatism, the idea of doing what works. The idea of abandoning values in the traditional sense. And so Machiavelli notes from the very beginning, it being my intention to write a thing which shall be useful to him who apprehends it, it appears to me more appropriate to follow up the real truth of the matter rather than the imagination of it. He's not trying to be like Plato or any of these other people that have written about the ideal state. Machiavelli claimed that he's doing something different because he is writing about the state that works, the ruler who can do what needs to be done. 
That is pragmatism. What is it going to take to get the job done? Values aside. No more ideals. Okay, we can see what happened to Socrates. According to Machiavelli, a man who wishes to act entirely up to the professions of virtue soon meets with what destroys him. Hemlock, anyone? All right, Socrates was a very virtuous man in the traditional sense, but was he an effective leader? No. In fact, Socrates was condemned to death by the people of his home city of Athens. And so let's remember what civic virtue is. Civic virtue is effective political leadership, not principled political leadership, but effective political leadership. And Machiavelli writes that it is necessary for a prince wishing to hold his own to know how to do wrong and to make use of it or not according to necessity. So you need to know how to get your hands dirty when you need to so that you can do it, note, or not. According to what? According to necessity. Doing what needs to be done. And this is where we get into the term Machiavellian, which a lot of times is misunderstood. A lot of times we may think of Machiavellian as cruel. If somebody's a Machiavellian ruler, that is a cruel person. No, that is an effective person. So sometimes to be Machiavelli could be to be nice. If the situation is one where you'd catch more flies with honey than with vinegar, then by all means, use honey. But if you need to use vinegar, And so the idea of Machiavellianism is that the end justifies the means. Did you get the job done? That is the only question, not um, who needed to be killed or anything like that in order to get the job done, but were you effective? And if you were effective, then you have been Machiavellian. Now, if you have been completely cruel and you have been ineffective, then you have not been Machiavellian. So in order to be Machiavellian, there is no set criteria other than to be effective. Machiavelli is the philosopher behind this classic phrase that it is better to be feared than loved. Now, of course, we all want to be loved. We would love for people to love us. And Machiavelli says, yes, in an ideal world, we would love to be both feared and loved. We would like for people to be afraid of us and to love us. But what if you have to pick? An effective ruler would rather be feared. Now, case in point, those of you watching this video are taking AP Euro, probably trying to get out of your readings now, I'm sure that you would rather be watching um, one of these viral videos uh, you know, rather than watching this, okay? But the reason you're watching this is not because you love your teacher, okay? I love my AP Euro teacher so much that I'm going to watch e-lectures on YouTube about Renaissance philosophy. No, you are watching this lecture right now because you believe that your teacher is about to give you a test or a quiz. You are afraid of failing the AP European History exam. Don't fail the AP European History exam. Be effective. Watch my videos. This is why you are watching. You are watching right now out of fear, not love. Because fear is effective. People love you as long as you're doing what they want and as long as things are good. People can fear you when times are good or bad, happy or sad. So if you have to pick one, it is much better to be feared than loved. But don't push it, okay? Don't push this whole fear thing to where you end up um, just making everybody hate you. Okay, so Machiavelli says, uh, you know, be careful about that. Don't push it. Nevertheless, a prince ought to inspire fear in such a way that if he does not win love, he avoids hatred. 
because he can endure very well being feared whilst he is not hated, which will always be as long as he abstains from the property of his citizens and subjects and from their women. Now where he gets this is from the ancient Roman story that we find in Livy, of course. Uh, he's a humanist about the rape of Lucretia, who was the most virtuous woman in the city of Rome, and she was raped by the king's son. In defense of her honor, after she told her husband and his friends what had happened, she killed herself because she could not live with herself with a stain on her chastity and virtue. Keep in mind that Lucretia embodies the same type of woman who was beautiful to the ancients, to the um, folks in the Middle Ages, and to the Renaissance humanists, this woman who is beautiful and virtuous. And so when the king's son raped this woman, uh, when this story got around, the Romans ran King Tarquin and his family out of Rome. And it was because of this atrocity. So stay away from people's property and especially stay away from their women. So walk a fine line. To be Machiavellian is not to be cruel, it is only to be effective. So a quick recap. Pragmatism is what Machiavellianism is about. Okay, that if you are Machiavellian, you are trying to do what works, what needs to be done. The end justifies the means because you have to be effective. If you were effective, then you were successful. If you were ineffective, you were not successful. And then finally, if you have to choose, it is better to be feared than loved. And that's all I have for you today. Feel free to subscribe. That way you'll see when I post more e-lectures for AP Euro. Visit TomRitchie.net. Follow me on Twitter at TomRitchie. And stay tuned for the next e-lecture for AP Euro. Until next time.